Hi, it's Dwyer. It's May 6, 2018, the day after the destruction of David Hay by Tony Bellew. Right now, this was not the fight I was expecting. I was expecting David Hay to win the fight by knockout. I was on the other side of the play. The hedge of Bellew simply to win held, but it was an imperfect hedge. What I want people to do, and I know many of you warned me about this fight, I want to encourage people to read the comment section to the pre-fight video when many of you talked about Bellew having superior boxing skills. That at this point of the fighter's careers, Bellew was the one setting things up better. Well, what I want to do is to talk about a moment in the fight. It's really uh, noteworthy to me. <clears throat> that really warrants our attention. It's the fifth round. Right now, in the fifth round of the fight, I know Tony, after the fight, was gracious and humble and claimed that David Hay was the better fighter. But in the fifth round of the fight, you'll notice Tony is relatively flat-footed. And you'll notice that while he's flat-footed, he tries to set things up where, as David Hay is backing away, and we'll talk about David Hay backing away later in this video, but as David Hay is backing away, Tony Bellew tries to throw a combination where the key punch is a left hook at the end of it. Right? Tony obviously has figured things out here. He knows that as Hay backs away, Hay's right hand is low. He knows from the preceding four rounds that as Hay backs away, his defense degrades. So, Bellew, relatively flat-footed, right, throws a perfunctory combination. I don't even think the early punches in the combination have a lot of up behind them. But he tries a home run left hook at the end of it. And Hayes able to roll away from it. So then Bellew, who sees the clear path to victory, for the first time in the round, and I want you, the viewer, to focus on Bellew's legs. For the first time in the round, <clears throat> Bellew decides to get up on the balls of his feet and dance. So folks, when we talk about traps, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Bellew knows <clears throat> that he wants to throw a left hook at the end of a combination because he understands when he engages with David Hay and David Hay tries to roll away, he's open for the left hook, right? Hay doesn't have his right hand up. He's not protecting himself. Hay's idea of defense in this fight is to back away and move his upper body. So Tony is convinced that he has the left hook timed. So sure enough, for the first time in the fifth round, right, first time in that round, Tony Bellew, after trying to throw a home run left hook, gets up on his toes, dances backward like clockwork, David Hay comes forward, walks right into the trap. Tony Bellew throws a right hand, doesn't even have a lot of ump on it. Then he comes back with the left hook that is the hardest punch I've seen David Hay hit with in Hay's career. Right? This left hook is so devastating that the only reason David Hay does not fall face first on the canvas is because Hay's shoulder gets in the way. In other words, Hay falls like this. The shoulder hits first, right? Had Hay been turned a little bit more, Hay could have broken his nose, hitting the canvas, right? When Hay gets up, he's a shell of himself. Bellu goes over there, lands a clean shot. The referee has seen enough. Keep in mind, the knockdown in the fifth round is the third time in the fight Hay hits the canvas, right? It's a masterful performance. It's a trap set by a fighter who knew. He knows 
that at the end of a combination, if he could get David Hay moving, right? If he's backing up and Hay comes forward, then he stops backing up and comes forward and starts throwing punches as Hay tries to roll and move away. He was wide open for that left hook, right? Good night, David Hay. Let me just offer a few other observations here. You know, I thought Hay started the fight well. It was clear that Hay was going to try to use his jab to keep Tony off of him. Right? I thought Hay looked good in the first round. I thought Hay looked good in the second round. But there were a few things that you notice Hay just was not able to do. Right? For the boxing hardcore, let me just say. David Hay doesn't clinch. You notice that in this fight? It's a mistake. He doesn't clinch. Right? Tony comes forward, starts throwing punches. David Hay, rather than stay there and clinch, David Hay decides he's going to back away from the punches. The problem is, David Hay isn't defensively blessed and as he backs away at this age he doesn't have defensive instincts so what you have is Tony Bellew the first knockdown Tony Bellew comes forward and David Hay rather than grab Tony keep in mind Hay's the heavyweight in the ring right Tony's the cruiserweight visiting heavyweight Tony comes in weighing something like 10 pounds less than David Hay Right? When Tony comes forward, and Tony clearly early in the fight is trying to land a straight right hand, right? That's the punch he ends up dropping Hay with the first time. Right? When Tony comes forward, Hay should have. Given that he had to know that backing up, he wasn't exactly Floyd Mayweather defensively. That backing up, he was relying too much on his upper body, right? That as he backed away, Tony at least matched him in foot speed. Tony would come forward, Hay was still in range. What Hay should have done, and this is a theme in the fight, Hay should have clinched him. Should have tied him up, right? Hay's the bigger man. The last thing Hay wanted was the smaller man chasing him around the ring. In other words, as long as Hay is on his front foot flicking a jab as he was in round one, he's okay. The hole in his game, and folks, it's a huge pothole right now, is when Hay backs up, his defense degrades. It disappears. So when Hay backs up in the third round after a decent start of the fight. Right? You notice Tony runs over there and David Hay literally looks to me like Canelo did against Golovkin. Right? David Hay's just backing up. He's not spinning and pivoting behind Tony. He does nothing to stop Tony from coming forward. And Tony is convinced that David Hay is rusty, is older now, and doesn't have the timing. Right? Tony knows David Hay is not going to plant his feet and hit a bomb as Tony's on the way in. He knows there are two David Hayes. David Hay on his front foot, still dangerous. Then there's David Hay on his back foot, not dangerous defensively open. That first knockdown, I want you to look at where David Hay's hands are. Right? David Hay gets hit with the right hand. Think about it. Tony's right-handed. Gets hit with the right hand right in the face, folks. Right in the face. Now, if David Hay's defensively blessed, he would have had, well, first, he would have clinched Tony. Right? Because Every bystander understood at that point, Tony's coming forward. You're fighting Tony Bellew. Suddenly, Tony starts to bum rush you. Take the steam out of his tires, right? Clinch him. 
Okay, that's not David Hay. So, Tony's coming forward. David Hay is backing up, folks. Have a hand up, please. You're fighting a right-handed fighter. Guard against the straight right hand and the left hook. Right? You know, some fighters, when you come forward, they're like matadors. They'll step to the side and, like, push you by them. Right? Other guys will just turtle up and go like this and move away. What's David Hay doing? David Hay backs up. He's like this, folks. Then as Tony comes forward, David Hay slides along the ropes. He's like this. When he gets hit with the right hand that drops him the first time, right? Tony doesn't have to squeeze it between a guard. Tony doesn't have to slip it around a hand that's up. Tony's not dealing with the David Hay that's even turned. So that back of the head, that's an illegal shot, has a hand up. Makes it hard to hit him. No, what, what's the worst possible position David Hay could have been in? Up against the ropes for the first knockdown. Folks, he's looking at Tony. A lot to hit. Where's his hand? His hand's not like this. Right? He's not bent like this. No, he's standing like this. Pretty much upright. And his hand is like this. What did he expect Tony to throw? Folks, he's practically defenseless then. Let me say this too. You know, I recently watched an Adrian Broner fight. Adrian Broner, Jesse Vargas. And I saw Vargas landing bombs. And Adrian Broner, of course, had a poker face, right? You can't go by fighters' faces, right? Experienced fighters will, you know, be hurting. And they'll try to look like you haven't phased them, right? In this fight, David Hay lands a pretty good punch. Tony Bellew wants you to believe the punch hardly hurt him, right? Tony Bellew shrugs at one point. The two guys shrug together. That's how ridiculous the expressions are. At the end of the third round, right, I'm telling you, when David Hay gets dropped the second time, he never recovers from the first knockdown. When he gets dropped the second time, don't look at David Hay's face, right? David Hay could have been shot at that point. His face would have had the same facial expression. Look at David Hay's body. Folks, his body is gone. I'm telling you, at the end of the third round, David Hay is lucky to have made it back to his corner. His body, he doesn't have complete control of his nervous system. Right? He doesn't. He's badly hurt at the end of the third round. Badly hurt. Right? Had that round gone another 10 seconds, we don't make it to the fourth round. So then we make it to the fourth round, and guess what? David Hay is back on his front foot. Looks good early in the fourth round. Why? Because that's the part of Hay's construct that worked. In other words, what Hay needed to do was to be more on his front foot, was to be more aggressive, right? Was to fire bullets back at Tony, Quite frankly, Hay never should have backed up. The people in his camp should have looked at him during training and said, Player, when you back up, you're practically defenseless. Right? At this stage, forget who you were as a young man. At this stage, when you back up, you're not defensively blessed. You don't have a hand up. The idea of just juking with your upper body isn't enough when Tony Bellew can match you in foot speed. You're not fighting value F here, right? You back up, Tony comes forward at the same speed, you're still in boxing range. Tony can hit you. So what his corner should have told him, quite frankly, is look, you know, when Tony comes forward, don't back up. Clinch him. Right? Have him walk into you. I'm telling you the Shane Mosley, Floyd Mayweather fight. Mosley hits Floyd with devastating straight right hands. Floyd's knees buckle on one of them. 
Floyd then holds on to Mosley. Right? It saves Floyd's unbeaten streak. Because I'm telling you, if Floyd is so dazed that his knees are buckling, it would have been game over if he would have employed the David Hay strategy of you get hit, you're hurt. Oh, why not just back away in the guy's punching range without your hands up? Right? There are many Floyd fights. One of the secrets of Floyd's defense was guys saw him as smaller. They would try to muscle him. They would try to move him. Right? And Floyd Mayweather would stand his ground. He would have the guy walk into a shoulder. Right? Let me say this too. When David Hay gets over to the ropes, right before the first knockdown, you know he's in trouble. Right? David Hay with his back up against the ropes is not Floyd Mayweather against Marcus Maidana. Right? He's not Ali against George Foreman with his back up against the ropes. That's not David Hay's game. He shouldn't have been up with his back against the ropes. His corner should have told him, player, keep the fight in the middle of the ring. Right? You should be the one cutting off the ring, not getting cut off. Right? So let me just say this. Hey, at this point, and I thought Tony's post-fight interview was excellent. Tony basically says, hey, style's a young man's style. Right? In essence, it's kind of a Roy Jones style. And Tony said, while the punching power is still there, power is the last to go. Right? Tony said, hand speed and timing go first. Right? Implicit in Tony's statements were the idea that, you know, David Hay doesn't have the hand speed and timing that he once did. Well, let me just say, on defense, the defense isn't there when Hay backs up. To the point where in the fifth round, Bellew twice tries to close the show with a home run left hook at the end of a combination. Right? He sets it up so it's movement. In other words, David Hay comes forward. Tony then comes forward, throws a combination as Hay tries to back away. Knowing that his defense isn't there as he backs away, Tony tries to put the exclamation point on the exchange with a left hook at the end. Doesn't work the first time. So to lure Hay in, Tony gets up on his toes, dances backward. Right? You know the rest. David Hay comes forward just like Manny Pacquiao against Juan Manuel Marquez. This time it works. That left hook practically ends the fight. Quite frankly, if I were a member of the Hay family, I'd be very appreciative of the referee right now for saving Uncle David, right? You know, because quite frankly, had the ref let that fight go on, Hay would have been in really bad shape because he was fighting a savvy vet who knew what punches to land when. You know, he understood. Hay on his front foot, I'm going to back away. I'm not going to engage that much. Right? Then when I have an opening, I'm going to start a little flurry. As Hay backs away, that's when I'm going to come forward. Right? It gets Tony two devastating knockdowns. Right? The first knockdown, which leads to the second knockdown. Right? And then it gets Tony the end of the fight. Right? David Hay falling on a shoulder. I'm just telling you, had Hay fallen face first, he might not have gotten up. Let me say this too. The first time when Hay's on the canvas, I want you to look at Hay on the canvas. Right, folks? He's badly hurt. In other words, each of the knockdowns badly hurt him. Right? Hay isn't even able to pop up off the canvas. He's hit right in the face, straight right hand, the first time he goes down, and he just plops down on the canvas. He never figures out the entire fight. 
how to defend himself when backing up from Tony Bellew. Tony Bellew understands that whatever else is happening in the fight, and I thought Bellew lost the first round, I thought he lost the second round, right? Whatever else is happening in the fight, Bellew understood there were going to be moments when David Hay was not going to clinch him, was going to try to back away from him and just move his upper body to dodge shots, right? Wasn't going to have his right hand up for defensive purposes, Right, so Tony understood all he had to do was to follow the ambush fighter after the ambush. Right? As Hay retreats, Hay is almost completely defenseless. Right? Shocking fight for me. Right? I was surprised. I was expecting a lot more from David Hay. Hell, I was expecting Hay to come in and treat Tony like Tony was a cruiserweight, right? Instead, Hay was the one being hunted. Hay was the one being dropped. Hay was the one walking into traps. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Let me just say, uh, Bellu, or Bellu, right? I understand people are upset with my pronunciation. Uh, Tony is calling out some awfully big names, right? Awfully big. I'd take Gassiev over him. I'd take Usyk over him. But I have to admire a man, Andre Ward. But, but I do have to admire a man who, when he calls out names, is calling out big names, right? And let me just say, Tony has proven me wrong in the past. He proved me wrong here, right? I have to tip my hat to an excellent performance once again from a fighter who insists on fighting the Adonis Stevensons, the Nathan Cleverleys, and now the David Hayes of the world. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.